This is an education presentation by Keith Davidson. It is the third communique from the Education Department of the Holloway Seventh-day Adventist Church since this crisis. In my communique last week, the focus was placed on suggesting how parents could respond to the COVID-19 crisis by considering issues relating to building stronger relationships with our children and recapturing parents' historical role in education. Here, now we have a brief summary of that last communique. In the presentation, there was an acknowledgement that we are in a global crisis, the likes of which we have not experienced for many decades. Nevertheless, the situation, I argue then, offers opportunities that can enable us to come out in a stronger position spiritually, socially, physically, and intellectually with our children. Some of these opportunities are, one, that parents can get close to their children, thus strengthening their relationship with them. This is critical to building trust and fulfilling the job of training up our children in the way they should go. Number two, to give our children more intentional guidance in the development of their social and emotional skills. And three, helping our children to build their resilience for facing the inevitable difficulties and challenges in life that they will indeed face. This week's communique moves us on by adding the church and the wider community to our ongoing dialogue on the work of education. Historically, the Seventh-day Adventist Church globally has developed a network of schools and other educational institutions to deliver its educational philosophy. Again, I invite you to see last week's communique. This strategy I submit to you illustrates the schools of the prophets structure that existed in ancient Israel, whether on the good or bad kings. For further references with respect to the prophet, the schools of the prophets, read 1 Samuel 19, 18 to 24. This is about Samuel leading a group of prophets prophesying. You can also read 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, 3, 5, 7, 12, and 15. This is about Elijah and Elisha. The Seventh day Adventist school system and its contribution to leadership and evangelism. This is the next topic. The Seventh-day Adventist school system has been a significant contributing factor in providing leadership personnel and workers for the church. Many of our pastors, workers, and local church leaders have attended Seventh-day Adventist schools and higher Seventh-day Adventist educational institutions. In essence, the church's school system is a modern-day representation of the schools of the prophet that existed in biblical times. The schools of the prophets were always an integral part of the temple surroundings. We recall how young King Josiah, described as a good king, sent Hilkiah to the prophetess Huldah for advice from the Lord. From all deduction, Hilkiah was in charge of the school of the prophets of the day, Second Chronicles 34, verse 22. It is reasonable to conclude that young Josiah may have had his spiritual training and development in the school of the prophets of the day headed by Huldah. Second Chronicles 34, verse 2 says, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Let us now turn to the key spotlight of this week's communique, which is to examine how spiritual, physical, emotional, and intellectual education contributed to the outstanding life achievements of Daniel and his peers. In the book of Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, it is recorded that Daniel and his friends were, one, from noble backgrounds. The principle here is that they were blessed with a with a positive learning environment at the start of their lives. Two, they were good looking, 
that is physically outstanding. Three, they were gifted with wisdom. Four, they were knowledgeable. That is to say, they were all very well informed young men. And five, they were quick to understand or able to comprehend well. A contrast between potential and training. In Luke chapter 10, verse 27, we read that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. These human dimensions are God-given potentials, and potentials are infinite. However, potentials can only be developed through education and training. In the story of Daniel and his friends, the scripts, scripture states that they were well equipped to serve in the king's palace, Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. They were well rounded and the background to their suitability was that they would most likely have had experience of being educated through the schools of the prophet system that existed at that time. However, what is more profound in this story was not so much their determination not to be defiled by the king's food, but their understanding that anything that adversely affects their spiritual, physical, intellectual, and cultural heritages would dishonor God and adversely affect their total development. At the risk of his position, the king's official agreed to the Hebrew boys' desire to remain faithful to their convictions and beliefs. After 10 days, when they were examined, they were seen to have had superior results in their development. However, the story did not end there. After three years of studying the language and literature of the Chaldeans, and when examined by the king himself, the objective outcome was that they had results or grades 10 times higher than the other students. What are the lessons from this story? Daniel and his friends were in a secular educational system, like many of our children today. This story shows that a rounded education involving values, spiritual development, and cultural awareness is vastly superior to other systems. The church is a community, and community-grounded education offers more to our children than a secular education. In the London area, the most we have can be counted as two Adventist schools, and they are insufficient for our educational needs in London today. Unfortunately, we carelessly threw away the former, the John Loughborough School, by collaborating with Haringey Council in its closure. Churches and communities in general are a better place to support their children in acquiring a rounded and holistic education in addition to the academic education provided by secular schools. Churches and communities are cradles for developing their children's value and heritages, that is spiritual, emotional, social, and cultural. Churches and communities transmit these values and heritages more effectively to children than secular schools. They practice and model these values and heritages by concrete intentional actions than the didactic instruction to be given in secular schools. Importantly, there is no disconnect between learning and community life with this model. Thus, we have an opportunity to reflect and to reshape our role in the education of our children. As we battle through this crisis and its challenges for the education of our children, we must nevertheless reflect on the opportunity for parents, the church, and the wider community to rediscover their leading roles in the education of our children. We conclude with an initiative by the Holloway Church. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, the pastors of the Holloway Seventh-day Adventist Church, Senior Pastor Tay Moore and Junior Pastor W. Gillen, 
alongside the elders D. Palmer and A. Onik, have by inspiration instituted a School of the Prophet type initiative designed to build the children's spiritual development. The program involves Bible study and training in values and principles for life development for our children each Sabbath afternoon. Furthermore, it also seamlessly leads into the Children's Pathfinders program for the day. Thus, it provides an important link between their spiritual development and the skills development work of the Pathfinder Club. In conclusion, post-COVID-19 should motivate us, that is parents, church, and the wider community to step up to the plate in the leadership we give and also in the investment we make in order to provide a rounded education for our children. An holistic education can only be delivered by us, that is, parents and church and no one else. Schools are not equipped to deliver this holistic learning for children. And so, as I come to an end to this presentation, let me leave it with some contact details. Should you need any specific advice on education per se, you can contact Dr. June Alexis, the Church's Education Secretary, on 07956-246517 or email her at junemalexis at aol.com. My contact details are mobile number 07850 723 treble zero. Email address is kth davidson at aol.com and kadavidson49 at gmail.com. And so, with every good wish from me, Keith Davidson, thank you for listening. God bless.